Tesla has officially chosen the Mexican state of Nuevo León as the location of their next vehicle production plant, also known as a Gigafactory. Even though it had been kinda rumored for a bit, this is a decision that came as somewhat of a surprise to most people, even those of us who have been following Tesla pretty closely. We'd had Canada and Indonesia on the radar, maybe the United Kingdom, but hadn't really put much weight into Giga Mexico. This is because we're idiots who don't actually know very much about the global economy. Once you start looking into it, there are a whole lot of very important reasons why Tesla is opening up shop in Mexico, and not just with a brand new factory, but the largest Giga factory yet, by far. This thing will make Giga Texas look small. So let's talk about why Giga Mexico is such a big deal for the future of Tesla. So the primary importance of Giga Mexico is that this will almost certainly be the first Tesla factory to produce their next generation vehicle platform, the company's first economy car or Model 2 or 25K Tesla, whatever you want to call it. This is the vehicle that Elon Musk anticipates will outsell every other Tesla vehicle combined, and that's probably why the volume of land purchased by Tesla for this factory is by far their largest footprint to date. At 4,200 acres, the purchase in Mexico is 68% larger than Tesla's Giga Texas property. Now, all we have to go on is a fairly basic rendering, but it doesn't look any bigger than the Austin factory. What we do know from what Tesla has done in Germany and Texas is that they use the surrounding land to build peripheral support infrastructure for the main factory. Things like battery cell manufacturing, drive unit production, power generation, that kind of stuff. For a long time now, Tesla executives have been talking about how they want to localize their supply chains as much as possible. So the assumption would be that Giga Mexico will eventually have all of the manufacturing infrastructure that they need all in one place. They won't be relying on imports of motors and battery packs all the way from Nevada or anything like that. According to information gleaned from the governor of Nuevo Leon, Tesla will be starting this factory from scratch with a brand new production line. This is the primary reason that it will take a little longer than expected to get the factory online. We all remember the rapid pace of Giga Shanghai, how it went from groundbreaking to production in about eight months. But in that case, Tesla was just making a copy of what they were already doing in Fremont, a much improved version of it for sure, but they already knew how to build a Model 3 at that point. With this next generation platform, Tesla is introducing a brand new manufacturing system. This was one of the key points at their investor day in March. The company is moving towards a highly automated, highly efficient production method that allows them to fully construct the front, back, and sides of the vehicle separately and simultaneously, and then just bring them all together at the end for one final assembly. So because the company will be introducing a brand new production method on a brand new car, we shouldn't expect to see Giga Mexico moving at light speed. Unlike every other Tesla vehicle that has come before, this is a process that they want to get right the first time. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. The really interesting factor here is just trying to figure out why Mexico. Obviously, Tesla sees this location as critically important to their next big step as a company. The easy answer would be to just say cheap labor, and that is true, but there has to be more to it than that. For one, the company already has access to affordable labor in China. Tesla could have very easily just decided to continue expanding their operations over there, and it's not like labor cost has ever proven to be a significant concern at Tesla. If they can make a profit building cars in Berlin, Germany, then they can make money building cars just about anywhere. Additionally, the whole point of the Investor Day presentation was that Tesla is streamlining and automating their new production process, so they're achieving higher production volumes per unit of labor. That alone makes human labor more affordable. Everyone talks about reducing cost. That's easy, 
but increasing productivity has the same effect on profit and the result is a larger market share, which inevitably leads to even more profit. And Elon has been telling us all along that the company is not making that car affordable just by cutting corners and cutting cost. The reason that the new car will be cheaper is because it will be fully optimized for mass production. This new platform will be built in half the amount of time it takes to build a Model 3. Tesla will eliminate rare earth metals from the drive unit. They're using LFP battery cells and structural packs. They're using Giga castings. They've redesigned the electronic system to run on 48 volt architecture and removed a massive amount of components from the wiring harness. There are so many factors that have gone into making this new platform economical that just saying cheap labor equals cheap car is preposterous. Another really interesting factor is thinking about what market this factory intends to serve. According to a report from Dave Lee on investing, who was able to speak with Tesla officials at Investor Day, Dave was told that Giga Mexico will not even be making cars for the North American market. This factory will not be sending product north. Let that sink in. Giga Mexico will be making cars for Mexicans, but it will also serve as a global export hub for South and Central America that could even include Africa, New Zealand, and Australia, maybe even Europe. This makes sense. We've got to really think, who is this car for? The easy answer would be to just say, well, anyone who can't afford a Model 3, but that's not how the consumer automobile market works. There are more factors at play in buying a car than just the price. Elon has said that the new platform will be smaller than a Model 3. That's pretty small. Americans, on average, do not like small cars. Sure, some people in North America are cool with driving a compact car, but most have decided that their wants and needs as a consumer necessitate a large vehicle. Tesla isn't going to change that. But pretty much everywhere else in the world, People love tiny cars. In many cases, that's because their narrow little roads don't leave them a whole lot of choice. I've experienced this firsthand, the difference going from Canadian roads that are ultra-wide with big ditches on both sides and mostly empty to driving in Europe. It's a harrowing experience. I've never been so afraid behind the wheel of a car. I'd rather drive in a blizzard. So, Tesla knows what they're doing here. They are going to sell millions and millions of this new car but they're not going to be a massive hit in North America. And here's where Mexico really comes into play. Did you know that Mexico has free trade agreements with 50 different countries? The United States has free trade with just 20 countries by comparison. Mexico's free trade extends to the European Union, Japan, Israel, Latin America, and South America. That means Tesla can reach a lot of their target market for this vehicle without having to pay any import tariffs. This just further strengthens the economic case. And Tesla is far from the only company that has identified Mexico as a desirable area for expansion. Over the past couple of years, Mexico has quietly established themselves as a new global manufacturing hub. If you search around the internet, you'll find loads of articles that claim Mexico will become the new China, and they seem to be onto something. This all kind of started with Donald Trump back in 2016, declaring a minor trade war between the US and China. It was made significantly worse by the coronavirus pandemic, and then it was made even more of a problem by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. A lot of people fell into the trap of just assuming that we would always have cheap, easy, peaceful trade with China. That was not the case. We all watched the global supply chain crumble and collapse, and the smart business leaders out there are not going to be interested in just going right back to the way things were before. This started a trend that has been dubbed nearshoring. Pretty self-explanatory. Companies are just trying to get their manufacturing as geographically close to their consumer market as possible. This eliminates problems like global shipping routes, crowded ports, and busy canals from the supply equation. In many cases, it reintroduces good old-fashioned trains as a way to transport your product. The state of Nuevo León, where Tesla will be setting up shop, is already a thriving modern manufacturing hub. The capital city of Monterey is not unlike something you would find in China. 
It has massive skyscrapers, world-class architecture, an international airport, and the Monterey Institute of Technology is regarded as one of the top universities in the world. It's literally the MIT of Mexico. We've even seen Chinese companies moving into Nuevo Leon and setting up new manufacturing facilities. Not far from the Tesla Gigafactory site is an industrial park where 28 Chinese companies have purchased land and are either actively doing business or in the process of construction. Tesla is far from the first U.S. automaker to arrive in Mexico. Ford has always produced their own electric car, the Mach-E, in a factory near Mexico City, which is significantly further south than Monterey and makes a lot less sense logistically, but that's Ford. GM has been building trucks in Mexico for years, and starting in 2024, they will be manufacturing their electric vehicles at a refurbished plant outside Monterey as well. This is a controversial territory, but in many ways, strengthening the manufacturing sector in Mexico is actually good for the American economy. The more products are being assembled in Mexico, the larger the market is for components and materials that are made in America. Tesla might be making battery packs and cars in Mexico, but we know that they will be processing their battery-grade lithium in Texas, and then shipping that material out to various locations on the continent. All that to say, what we know for sure is that Tesla's new operation in Mexico will be unlike anything we have seen before from the company, and it's going to mark a pretty significant change in the way Tesla operates as a global automaker. Stay tuned. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.